What I'm hoping to accomplish with a video like this is save you guys some money if you're in the market for a chainsaw that can handle a 25 inch bar. Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms. And today I wanna to show you a chainsaw that I find really intriguing because of how inexpensive it is compared to all of my other chainsaws. So let's look at what we've got here. This is a 391, steel 391, steel 500i, steel 250, steel 194, and a DeWalt 60 volt. But let's look at it in another way. This is $800. This is $1,800. There's $2,600 plus four makes $3,000. This is another $600, $3,600. This is $600. There is $4,200 of chainsaws there, which is frankly ridiculous. But I absolutely love chainsaws, and I repeatedly thought that I had the one I needed and then realized I was going to do some new bigger thing and upgrade it. I started with the 250, then I went 391, then I went 500, then I thought I wanted a lightweight saw, and I got a gas powered lightweight saw and an electric saw. So that's a lot of money just to cut some wood up, right? And I think a lot about the value and I think I absolutely love this 500i. It's an incredible saw. Like it starts in two pulls every time, never starves for power. I can run a 36 inch bar on it. But if I was going again today, would I spend 1800 on this? Now, to be fair, I bought this right before COVID went crazy, and I got it for like $1,080. So I've been thinking if I was starting over, what chainsaw would I buy? Because that's the most valuable information to the viewer. So my friend Joe from the Oki Woodsman YouTube channel is a complete chainsaw fanatic. He's got a whole bunch of saws from different brands. He takes them apart. He's got them modified and ported and He's just really into chainsaws and he brought over a Proyama chainsaw that he got off Amazon and he said this thing is super cheap and it'll outperform this steel top handle. And so we tested it and it did. It cut twice as fast. And I, that was all I thought about it. But then he started telling me the story about where these Proyama chainsaws come from. That there's a chainsaw design that's very simple and robust that's been around for a very long time. It's a Japanese brand. And I've actually forgotten how you pronounce the original brand, but they're sold in the U.S. as Redline chainsaws. And now recently the Craftsman chainsaws started using the same platform. And this is a different company, but it's basically the same design. And what I'm looking at here is a $250 chainsaw that has the power ratings of a comparable saw from steel that would cost around $1,000. So this saw right here, the Steel MS391, should compare equally to this saw right here. And I want to find out if it actually does. Now today we're going to compare those chainsaws and see how it performs. But that only tells you so much. What I'm doing right now is I'm committing that I'm only going to run this cheap saw for everything I do until either 90 days, which is enough to give me somewhat of a review of if I have any issues with it, or until I get sick of it and say, this saw sucks. So I'm committing to doing a prolonged test on this saw. Let's open it up, fire it up, and do some cutting. All right, let's open it up and see what we get in the box. The cool thing about that $250 on the price is that you actually get more with it for that price. So we've got a helmet. This isn't a helmet. This is a face shield. So this snaps on here and it'll protect you from getting hit in the face with, with stuff flying back at you. And I like to wear a face shield. So let's see if this will snap on here. So I have a helmet that I like better. It has the same type of face shield, but it's actually a helmet. But if you didn't have anything like that, you're starting out this is nice to include some safety gear. We've got hearing protection. In my life, I've mainly never been the PPE guy. I'm the guy who's always not wearing it when he should. 
But recently I've had enough incidences where I almost could have got hurt to change my mind. So we've got some gloves. We've got a fuel mixing bottle. You know, this stuff adds minimal value, but it's, it's nice to include it. We've got a scrinch, carb adjusting tool, some, the dogs are in that. Okay, the chain brake is here, so that your chain brake is on your, your tensioner cover. Scabbard, I'll probably throw that away. I'm bad about it. I don't keep stuff like that. And then here we've got a, we got two chains. You know, chains are expensive. One of these will be a 20 inch and the other's 25, I believe. And I think after my long-term test, if I like this saw, I'm still not gonna replace the 500i. There's, I mean, the 500i will be my, my saw for running a big bar, but this might be something that I keep the 20 inch bar on. And if you put a, a shorter bar on, the saw feels a lot more powerful. So here's the 20 inch bar, and they call this a 24 inch bar. Now Joe tells me that the steel 25 inch bar, if you put it next to any other 24 inch bar, they're gonna come out the same. So you have that much adjustment within your, within your saw. Here's the power head. Now we're gonna look at all the numbers. What Joe told me is that this power head would be a little heavier than the equivalent from steel, but it's, you know, it's a steel saw, not steel brand. It's, it's got more metal in it than plastic. So let me get the bar and chain on this, get some oil in it, gas in it, and then we'll be right back. I'm not sure if I said it in the intro, so I'm going to say it here again to make sure that I put the message out there. I did not buy this chainsaw. I've got enough of a following here on social media that any tool in this price range, I can usually email the company and they'll send it to me. In this case, Proyama saw the video that I made with the Oki Woodsman, asked if I'd like to um, make some more videos reviewing their products. I said, yes, send me your big 68cc saw. But I didn't pay for this, but it's the same type of deal that I normally do. They're also not paying me to say anything about it. They just send the product out and I'm gonna tell you what I think. So this is a little bit, I'm no chainsaw expert, so if you guys know more about this than I do, tell me. So the chain brake is here on this cover, which is very different than steel. The clutch is above the bar and stays on there like that. It looks completely different. I don't know if that's better or worse. I do know that that's what the Echo chainsaw that Joe brought looked like underneath. Felt like maybe just a little bit harder to get the chain around it, but no big deal. Could be just a little bit tight, but sometimes they loosen up whenever you actually cycle it over. So I like to tighten it, start the saw and run it, and then make sure it's still the right tension. Okay, as far as the operation on this, I don't need the, the manual or anything. It's got a prime bulb here, which is, I think most chainsaws don't have, but the 500 does. It's got a, a choke here. The choke does not auto release. If you're used to a steel where the choke goes off, this doesn't do that. And there's a on off switch. It's a manual toggle. When Joe was here, he talked about how much he liked the simplicity of those designs. I don't have any opinion on that. And of course, your standard thing here to fill your gas and your bar and chain oil. I want to let it break in a little bit. One thing I figured out is that pulling the trigger, the throb does release the the choke on it. Another thing I figured out, the bar is actually loose now that I've ran it, so I'll have to tighten that up. 
I'm just gonna let it run a little bit, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Throttle it a little bit here and there, let it break in. Maybe I'll stop and read the manual like I was talking about. Whenever I do a chainsaw comparison, I try to have the same bar and chain on both of these. But I actually want to test out the Proyama too. Now they're the same length bar and the same length chain. They're both brand new chains. That looked like a very similar chain that's the 3 8 pitch. I got a brand new chain on the 391. Now, coincidentally, and I didn't realize it whenever I ordered that Proyama saw, but these are the perfect saws to compare to each other. This is 64 point something cc, that's 68 cc. So very close, little bit more reported power on that one. This is 4.5 horsepower, 4.4 horsepower, 4.5 horsepower on that. So the 391 and the Proyama 68 cc are very comparable chainsaws and it's a fair test. been on the ground it's got some mud on it I'd like to knock some of that off with my handy dandy rock hill farm hatchet so i have a routine for how i test these chainsaws i start the saw and then i start a timer and let that timer run for two minutes when it gets to two minutes i figure the saw is warmed up at that two minute mark, when I see it, I place the timer where I can see it from here. When it hits two minutes, I start cutting. I'll make three cuts and I do not really force the saw down. I just let it eat to try to be consistent. And I make one down, one up, one down. After three cuts, I check the time and just see which saw is faster. And that's one part of a chainsaw comparison. <laughs> One thing I can tell you is I'm so used to the 500i, with it, I start it, I pull the trigger, you could, within two seconds of starting that saw, you could cut at full power. This and the other one need that warm up.
that was one minute and nine seconds. So six seconds difference on three cuts is not a huge difference, but this was faster. Now we're about to run the 500i and get a, a baseline for what a fast saw would do. All right. I want to make this test fair, so I took the brand new chain off the 391, put it on the 500, and I guess it's not new anymore. It's got three cuts on it, but that's as controlled as we're going to get. So the steel 391 was the slowest at a minute and 15 seconds. The Pro Yama was a little faster at a minute and nine seconds. The 500i was 36 seconds. So less than half of the time of the other steel saw. That's a ridiculous saw. I love the 500i. So what, what's the conclusion you take from this? Said, well, if you're desperate to have a really fast cutting saw, Spend your 1800 and get the 500i. If you just want a good saw at a good price, I'd be really tempted by that Proyama at $259. It's a lot of value for what it just did in this comparison. Now, how long will that saw last compared to the 391? And was this a fair test? Because one saw is older and has been used, and that could hurt the performance if it was really old. But it hasn't been that old. It's not. It's only a few years old, and I don't use it that much. And you could say the other saw wasn't broke in yet, and it would run hotter once it was broke in. So, feels like a fair comparison to me. And if you're interested in a Pro Yama saw, I'll put a link in the description where you can get it off Amazon. Anyway, I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.